Congratulations, we'll see you down the road. The variety of the Mum Strength Pepto. On this week's vlog, I'd like to talk about Toru Nakajima. Now, whilst Toru is a name that might be familiar to a few of you, there's probably quite a lot out there that have never heard of him. Don't worry, you've not been slacking on the who's who in the world of climbing. Toru is a quiet guy that likes to keep himself to himself. But I'm just going to go right out and say it. He's one of the most gifted, strongest climbers I've ever seen. Although I like to dabble in lots of climbing styles, I'd consider myself predominantly a trad climber. It basically means I like shuffling along ledges. Yeah, once upon a time I climbed a few tricky boulders, which means I've got a fairly okay understanding of just how hard some of the moves these modern boulders are doing nowadays. I actually train with some of those guys from time to time, and although I'd never pretend to be as strong as them, I can sort of play in the same room. Toro, however, is on another level. He's just somebody I can't understand, and whenever he climbs, I just have to stop and look and smile. He somehow seems to float. Everything looks so easy, and you convince yourself that what he's pulling on must be jugs, but when you go look, there's just nothing there. When he climbs, Toro is the definition of grace and perfection. He's like a cat. A Japanese ninja cat. When we arrived on the island of Kinkasan, it was already halfway through the first day. We didn't really have time to hike to the other side of the island where the bigger cliffs were, and so decided to settle on going bouldering on some of the island's closer cliffs. We scrambled down to this beach full of giant white boulders of perfect granite. We were like kids in a candy store, just running around picking off first ascents. Well, I say us. Toru was running around picking off first ascents, because by the time we'd even got our shoes on, Toru had already climbed most of the perfect lines. What separates Toru from a lot of the other strong boulders out there is that he's not actually that interested in doing hard moves. For Toru, what's important is just doing beautiful lines. And for him, what makes a line beautiful is often the fact that it's a bit scary. In Japanese? In English. In English. I found this line. It's really, it's maybe not so hard, but it's beautiful and good location. And maybe it's not so hard, so we can try from ground up. After he warmed up on some of the more regular boulder problems on this beach, Taro spotted a couple of highballs that he just had to go and do. When he first told us what he planned to do, it seemed a little shocking. And that was even before he told us he wanted to do it without mats. Yep, yeah, that's right. In Japan they have a thing called trad bouldering, which is basically bouldering without crash pads. The Japanese guys consider it to be the purest style of climbing, and people have actually climbed up to V15 without crash pads. When Toru started climbing on his first high ball of the trip, everybody just stopped and watched. My heart was definitely in my mouth, but when you see him climb, and you see how flawlessly he moves, after a while you realise he's probably okay. He's just so strong and so good, there's really very little chance he's going to fall off these things. Still, there's always a big difference between doing something in your comfort zone and something that pushes you, or even starting out in something you think is going to be easy and realising halfway through that you might have bitten off more than you bargained for. That's exactly what happened on Toru's second boulder of the trip. And at this point, it's becoming something that I wouldn't really call bouldering anymore. So this boulder in question climbed a steep, overhanging face over what I can only describe as a death chute. Imagine a giant pile of boulders loosely stacked together with a hole kind of running between them that just falls directly into the pounding ocean. Yeah, that's right, that was Toru's second boulder. No decision about putting crash pads, there's just no landing to put them on. It's like deep water soloing, but without the deep water and a cheese grater to guide you into the sea. This is definitely not something that I was ready to do. To make matters even worse, Toru decided to climb this thing on site. Oh my god! Woo! Scary. 
Ah, terribly scary. Yeah. Oh, yes! After his ascent, I actually sat down with Toro on top of the boulder just to chat it through and find out how he felt. I was quite happy to see that on some level he was human. The boulder definitely demanded more than he'd anticipated. But the thing with Toro, he's just got so much in reserve that it didn't really oh, matter. Just scary. <laughs> really scary. Was it harder than you thought it was going to be? Yeah. <laughs> harder than I thought. Would, would you do that he again? He even misunderstood when I was asking him about how scary okay. it was and whether one time was enough. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to try again. <laughs> one time is enough. One time? The what? poor thing thought I was asking him to do it one more time and even offered to do it as long as I filmed. Will, will film? Toro just loves climbing full stop, whatever the style. Actually, at the moment, his favourite style of climbing is reverse waterfall climbing. I'll let you do a Google search to find out what exactly that is. On this one day climbing on the beach, the two of us would just hike around, look for new problems, and Toro's definition of what made a problem was not always the same as mine. Toro just showed me one of his new boulder problems he did yesterday. Calling it a boulder problem is maybe not the right definition, but I find it very, very hard and very, very physical. I think that Toru should probably show you what it's all about. <laughs> because I'm not doing it again. There he is. From time to time, however, he would just get taken by the simplicity of doing a hard set of moves. This is a boulder that's unnamed and ungraded, but, well, I tried to pull in some of the holes and I could barely lift my ass off the floor. Taro spent about 20 minutes working this thing and went from not being able to do any of the moves to finding a way to link it in some perfect harmony. What was amazing was his perfection. Every move was completely dialed. If something seemed a little bit sketchy or scrappy, he'd go back, work on it and make it perfect. After all the fun and games of bouldering were out of the way, and the weather cleared up when we made it to the other side of the island, Toru got to work on his main objective, which was actually to climb one of Yuji's trad projects that he hadn't had time to finish off the year before. Yuji had given us all sorts of beta on the project, telling us what sort of gear, the kind of climbing style, and also roughly how hard to expect the thing to be. Yuji thought it was pretty pumpy, around 7C or 7C+. Toru got there only to find the line completely wet. Now, at this point, any normal person would have just accepted it wasn't to be. But not Toru. He did his best to dry it off with a little bit of chalk and a few towels, waited around a few hours, and when he got bored, he just went for it anyway. Wet 7C plus finger and hand crack. Mm -mm -mm. Well, again, I'm probably going to have to leave that one to Toru. 